Hey guys, what's up? So today I'm going to show you how I discovered a possible window sealant problem up here on the cabin front passenger window. I'm going to show you how I fixed this problem and prevented it from becoming a bigger problem. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. You guys know how I preach maintenance, 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 right? Being proactive is the key to preventing small problems turning into big problems and costly problems. So let me give you a little background on what led me to find this problem. I kind of want to go back in history a little bit. When we first got this coach, I knew one of the things I wanted to do was to have window shades on the windshield and also on the passenger and the driver's side. Now, I initially looked at possibly getting the Magna Shade. There's the ones that stick up on the windshield that have magnet. But the problem with that is, is that I wanted to also have window shades on both sides of the coach when we're parked. These shades, they just really tremendously help hot sun and heat coming into the coach during the summertime. Now, some of the new coaches, you know, they have power shades on the inside, both on the side cabin windows and in the front of the, of the windshield inside the coach. But our coach is a 2012. We didn't have that. So I had to decide on how I was going to do this on the outside of the coach. So I decided to go this way. These shades snap on very easy. It takes me about a minute to put each one on and these were made by the RV Sunscreen Company. They actually came out to our location and they measured each individual window and sewed them on site. I mean, they're a great company. So if you're looking for something like this, they're a great company to work with. I'm not affiliated with them or anything like that, but uh, we've been very pleased with these shades. These shades here are four years old and look how nice they fit around there. Another thing that I really like about these shades is that they do not obstruct the view looking from the inside out. You can see everything just perfect outside, but nobody can look inside. And I just love that. When I take a shower in the day, I can parade up and down inside the motorhome with no clothes on. Who cares? Nobody can see me, right? So the other day when we arrived here in Oklahoma, I was putting up the shades and up there at the top on the passenger side, as I was snapping them in, I got to looking at the sealant on the top of that window. And it's just now starting to peel away and crack a little bit. And I said to myself, mm -hmm, I need to deal with that. And I need to deal with it now before it turns into a bigger problem. And that's what we're gonna cover today. Now this window is not leaking now, but I'm going to take care of it now before it does turn into a bigger problem and does start to leak. The steps that we're going to take to fix this problem is we're first going to remove as best as possible all the old sealant. Then I'm going to show you how to apply a nice, clean, thin bead of new sealant. The technique that I'm going to show you is the same technique I used years ago when I did all of my bay doors. Now, when I did my bay doors, I use a different product than what I'm gonna use up here. And by the way, every coach that is made, they have what they call a, a call-out sheet. You really should go to your uh, manufacturer's website and find the call-out sheet. And it will specify in different areas on the coach what kind of sealant you should use. So be sure to do that for your coach. So the tools we're going to use today for this job is going to be, first of all, a ladder. And then we're going to use a tube of clear ProFlex RV flexible sealant. Then we're going to need a caulk gun. And please, don't go to one of those cheap hardware stores and get one of those $2.98 caulk guns. Those things are such a pain in the butt. Spend a couple of extra bucks and get a better one like this. Then we're going to need a razor knife, a plastic razor knife with extra razor blades. These blades are plastic, an old toothbrush, a bottle of alcohol, a bottle of paint thinner, 
and paper towels. I'll have links to all this stuff down in the description text like I always do. Now ideally, you want to do a job like this when it's warm, about 80 degrees. You can do it when it's hotter, but you know, why sweat if you don't, if you don't have to, right? But the reason you want to do it warm is you want the surface to be warm and you want the ProFlex to be warm. When it's warm, the ProFlex is nice and pliable in here. And when we, get, when we begin to apply it to the new clean surface, it's going to ooze out of this tube nice and slow, nice and smooth, and it'll go on a whole lot easier. Another thing is, is you want to make sure that you're not going to have rain in the next 48 hours or so. Once we put this on, we want it to take about 48 hours to fully cure. What I do is I keep this stuff in the coach so it'll warm up to the temperature of the coach. Now, if it's, if it's sunny outside, you can just lay this out on a table or something and let it just sit in the sun for a couple hours and that will also get this nice and pliable. If you keep this tube in your bays with, the with your other sealants and lubes, and you just take it out of there to tackle a job and it's cold down in that bay, you're going to find very quickly that it's going to come out hard. It's not going to be very pliable. So it's always best to prepare the tube before you're actually going to do the job and get it up to temp. So before we get up there and do this job, I want to show you a little tip on how to prepare this tube. What we want to do is we want to lay a very thin, even bead. Okay, and so the first thing you want to do is you want to cut just the very tip of this. You do not want to come way back here. Okay, you see how that is tapered? You want to come and get just that small tip. And that will leave that big of a hole right there. Then I'm going to take this small screwdriver and stick it in here and poke a couple of holes in the foil that's down there that seals it. Then you push this button and pull that back, drop the tube inside, push it forward, and we're ready to go. Okay, so I've got the window shade off, and as always, I've got my work clothes on. I've got these dedicated clothes that I put on every time I go to work on something because I got tired of ruining my, <laughs> my new clothes. And then, of course, I've got my arm sleeves on to protect my arms. So let's get on the ladder and let's get going. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take my razor knife here. And this plastic razor knife, as you can see, it will not hurt the paint, but it'll get up underneath here. And I'm hoping that you can see this in the camera. It took quite a bit to get the camera <laughs> at the angle that I wanted you to see this at. But this is, a, this is a great tool. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you here is I'm right-handed. I would normally be doing this, but I'm afraid you won't be able to see that. So I will show you. You see how you come from the top and you get in behind it like that and it'll just peel that stuff right off the edge there. And with a plastic razor knife, you don't have to worry about it scratching the paint or any decals or anything like that. And so once you've done this part right here, then you come up under it like this and you slice it this way. And you see how all that old stuff, look at that. It just comes right out of there, right? And this is what we're going to do. We're going to go all along here. And as you can see, these break. That's why you carry extras. To put in a new one, you see on the back here, there's a little nut that sits in there. You put your finger on that nut and you unscrew this to remove the old blade. You put the new blade in and lock it back down. I would have turned the camera around and showed you from this, where you could see me from the other angle, but then the camera would be shining in the sun and then you wouldn't get a very good view. But you certainly can get the gist of this. I mean, look how easy that comes off of there. This job is like anything else. You want to take your time, be patient, and there's no damage at all. 
to the paint or the seal for that matter. Now I've got about 90% of that off of there already. And now I'm coming back here and just trying to get the little stuff. You see all that little flaky stuff coming off there? So that pretty well got that all out. Now I'm going to take my little my toothbrush and clean out that groove. Get any other little additional pieces out of there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of paint thinner. And I squirted some on the brush. And I'm going to get in here. So if there's any other residual little pieces in there, it will kind of loosen those up and I can get those out of there. Okay, that looks fantastic. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe off this paint thinner and now I'm gonna use alcohol. I put alcohol, this is another one of my containers. I just buy one of these things at Walmart or Home Depot and I fill it with alcohol. But the reason I'm using alcohol is I want now to remove any of that paint thinner in there and get that surface totally clean. Now in other videos, I've had several of you ask me, Martin, how do you make your sealant seams, your beads, how do you make them so smooth? This is how right here. I take painter's tape. You uh, saw me do this in cracked graphics also. When I did that, how to fix faded and cracked graphics. This is how you do it. You lay a fine line of blue painter's tape. Because if I did not use blue painter's tape and I just took out that old stuff and then laid in a bead there and smeared it, you know, it can get pretty messy. It's very easy to lay some painter's tape in here and protect the seal that I'm covering right now and the, the coach itself. So all I have exposed here is that bead. You see that? And when I get to the corner where I have to go around the corner, I'll tear that tape off at the corner. I know it's hard for you guys to see way back there, but I'll try to explain. You use little pieces and kind of round the corner. Here's a picture of how I did the bay doors. I'm doing the exact same thing here. And you can see how I just walk that tape around the corner to protect the area where I don't want sealant to get to. This is what it looks like going around the corner. And this is what it looks like on a straight edge. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to lay a little bead of this ProFlex right there on that line and this line does not need to be pretty okay i'll show you in a minute what we're going to do but this lay in a nice little thin bead and it's flowing real nice so there is the bead of new sealant some would say martin you need to be putting on gloves with this you can't this proflex is very tacky so what i do is i take my thinner my paint thinner, and I spray a little bit on my finger, okay? And then I take that and I smooth it out. And you have to keep that thinner on your finger, and I mean liberal, otherwise it will not smooth out. You want that to smooth out. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm pressing it into that crack, and then it just kind of oozes. You see how it comes out on the side of that tape? That's exactly what I want it to do keeping your finger well moist with that thinner. And that puts a nice smooth, I don't know how else to say it, but it kind of makes that, that top sealant glazy. So now I'm gonna take my paper towel and thinner and wipe off my hands. And then I'm gonna take and peel off the tape. Very slowly, don't do it fast. And don't pull it way out like this. Keep the tape tight and just keep pulling it. And that will pull all of the excess that if we did not have this tape on, that's what would be all over the coach, right? 
So this kind of gets rid of all that excess smearing and all that. That takes care of the top. Now we're going to do the bottom piece. If it starts to peel a little bit away while you're pulling it, wet your finger again and just kind of press it in there very so slightly. Continue to remove the tape. Before we go any further, I'm going to get any residual um, ProFlex off my hands. And anything that's up here that got on the coach, just take some thinner and your rag, paper towel, whatever you're using, and that cleans that up. Same thing here on the seal. Okay, now for the final touch. You take your thinner again, put it on your finger again, and make it very liberal on there. And this is the final smooth out right here. You're taking this and just running it very gently over the ProFlex. And that takes those little edges. Remember when we were peeling the tape off? How it was kind of pulling away a little bit? That will, this will smooth all those out. And you just keep doing that. Maybe two or three inches at a time. And putting more thinner on your finger so the ProFlex does not stick to your finger. Boy, this corner right here came out beautiful. That was the worst spot, was right in this area here. That came out really nice. Any excess that you have on here, you can come now with your paper towel and thinner and wipe that off. When you look at this real, real close, there's a couple of places like right here, right here, and that's really about it that kind of it kind of smashed up and made a little ridge now when it dries and you're from the ground you would not even see that but if that bothers you let this set now okay let it set for 24 to 48 hours then you can come back with your razor knife and just cut that and cut that and that'll all be done it'll be one complete uh, nice even line and this is what it looks like all done. So this job is finished. So let's go back down and I have closing comments. Now you see why I wash my own coach. I do my own maintenance. I get up underneath the coach. I get on the roof, I do these different things because as I'm doing regular maintenance items, which are called PM items, preventive maintenance things, when I do these things on a regular basis, as I'm working in whatever area I'm in, I'm still looking around, looking for other potential areas that might be uh, getting ready to fail. That's how I found this thing here. I was just merely wanting to wash the windows before I put the shades up and I saw this problem. I thought, well, I'm going to take care of this now before it becomes a big problem, okay? So that's why I so encourage you all to kind of get really familiar with your coach or your RV and do these things, learn to do these things yourself and keep your eye open for potential failure points. My goal with our channel is to show you step-by-step -step instructions and procedures on how to take care of these DIY jobs. You guys can do these things. And if you do these things, you not only will know they're done right, but you're going to end up saving a lot of money in the long run. Oh, and don't forget, when you do a job like this, go to your log books and log it in. Put the date, the mileage on the coach, tools that you used, and all of that. So later on, if you have to address another similar situation, you'll have all those notes right there and you'll know when you did it. And as I said earlier, the links to everything I used here will be down below in the description text. And again, I want to tell you guys, Joni and I are so appreciative when you use our links to buy your gear or maintenance items or tools or whatever you need, because we need this stuff, right? I mean, if we're going to keep these things running right, you need this stuff. So when you use our links, we're just so grateful. It really, really uh, helps us out. And we're so grateful. Oh, and don't forget, there's a ton of other DIY maintenance and upgrade videos right up here. Comments, likes, and subscribing, all that. You guys know all that. Enough said about that, right? So there you have it. This is how I performed a preemptive strike 
on a possible serious window leaking problem if I did not take care of this. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.